So elliptical wings are, are difficult and expensive to manufacture, so very few aircraft actually use them. The most famous example being the Spitfire. Now the simplest possible kind of wing is a rectangular wing. But this has low span efficiency and so tends not to be used um, whenever it can be avoided. The compromise is the tapered wing. Something like this. Where we can define a root cord CR and a tip cord CT and define the taper ratio CT over CR and it's possible to select such a value of that taper ratio for a given aspect ratio um, to closely approximate the elliptical Lift distribution. So, try to illustrate exactly that effect. Um, if you look figure 5.20 of the text, uh, which in the fifth edition is on page 440, shows delta um, as a function of aspect ratio and taper ratio. I'll sketch that figure here so that you can get a sense of the behavior. So this is our CT over CR axis, which goes from 0 to 1. And this is our delta axis, 6. Or, um, and then we can draw curves that look something like this. Two, four, close together. Six, four, two, eight. This is zero point two, zero point four, zero point six, zero point eight. So linear axes. Um, then we could draw a few curves that look like. I'm drawing these qualitatively. If you want to look at them quantitatively, have a look at the figure in the textbook, as it's obviously a lot more accurate than my hand drawn picture here. But we can see that there's always a minimum, and these are for increasing aspect ratio. So this is AR equals 4, AR equals 6, AR equals 8, and AR equals 10. And there's a minimum, and you see that the minimum uh, goes at a higher taper ratio as the aspect ratio increases. And so, regardless of aspect ratio, it's possible to choose a correct taper ratio, if you will, to get the lowest possible de delta and therefore the highest span efficiency. And tapered wings are also relatively easy to manufacture, and so most aircraft actually use tapered wings, whether they're swept or unswept. Now, we can see here that the delta rate uh, effects are not all that large. Even over this large range of aspect ratio, you know, delta is always sort of of the order of 0.1 uh, at the optimum taper ratio. So this isn't necessarily the effect which actually dominates the performance of a finite wing. 
Instead, it's aspect ratio. which has the most important effect. And that's because CDI is inversely proportional to the aspect ratio. And that's true for both the general and the elliptical lift distributions, where, like I said, delta, the effect is relatively weak. So this aspect ratio effect dominates the induced drag coefficient. So basically, we want to maximize the aspect ratio to minimize the induced drag. Now recall, that the total drag coefficient of the wing, CD, is little CD, which is the uh, profile drag of the 2D airfoil sections, assuming it's constant along the span, over CL squared pi EAR, which is our induced drag coefficient. And so you can see that there's a parabolic variation of the total drag coefficient with the lift coefficient. And this gives rise to what we call drag pullers. So that may look something like this. Now, Consider two wings that have aspect ratios AR1 and AR2, keeping this graph in mind. So CD of the first wing, CD1, is going to be little CD. And we'll say that these wings are the same in all other ways so that the little CD is the same. And CD2 is CD plus CL squared over pi E AR2. Further, let's assume that these wings are such set up such that they actually have the same lift total lift coefficient CL. The variation in E, remember this is related to delta, um, the variation E is fairly small, and so we can neglect it and say that it's probably about the same for the two wings. And if we make that simplification, we can say that CD1 is CD2 plus CL squared over pi E, 1 over AR1 minus 1 over AR2. And this equation is very useful because it allows you to scale drag pullers between different aspect ratio values for a given wing. And this is, even though there's been a couple of approximations made here, the main one being that E doesn't change, this is quite effective. And if you look, this is shown in figure 5.22 in text. This is a very uh, useful, sort of quick way to see how much uh, you can change the induced drag by changing the aspect ratio of a wing if you've evaluated the induced drag for one aspect ratio already.